I was not surprised with the raid last week of former Mayor Steve Reed's home in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, Dauphin County, who was many times named one of the top mayors in America. He served 28 years. Investigators who conducted the raid were from the Pennsylvania Attorney General's office, and they took out lots of property and many artifacts from his home. The entire street was blocked off, and there were reporters from all over the state of Pennsylvania camped out all day. There have been ongoing rumors and innuendos and public comments on social media and in print for many, many years that have identified him and other well-known local names, law firms, and financial operations as having done something possibly illegal. They believe that threw Harrisburg, Pennsylvania into a financial disaster. So this raid was only a part of the work of the now statewide grand jury that's meeting in Pittsburgh, and it is apparent that the purchases of the artifacts by Mayor Reed himself, which cost multi-millions, is just a part of their interest. But we must remember this raid does not indicate that Mayor Reed or anyone else that has been named on any other source did anything illegal, even if Mayor Reed or some others are indicted. Now, will this raid itself be the beginning of the total destruction of the lengthy and, in my own personal opinion, extraordinary legacy of tremendous accomplishments of Steve Reed? I certainly hope not. I must say that Mayor Reed, when he became mayor, was only 32 years old. He had already, though, distinguished himself as an effective political leader. And he inherited, at that time, a city that was on the verge of bankruptcy. Most of the critical problems he faced were brewing for many years. But Steve took the challenge. And over the years, the city of Harrisburg truly prospered. Just to name a few of his significant accomplishments for the city, and many can be seen today, the Hilton Hotel, the magnificent City Island, the Harrisburg Senators baseball team, the tremendous Harrisburg University, the beautiful Civil War Museum. He also left a great police and fire department, a new city hall, that really great restaurant row in downtown Harrisburg, great additions and improvements to many well-known parks and playgrounds that had become a disaster. He also left a very responsive and highly trained river rescue. Then there's the beautiful boat on the Susquehanna River called the Pride of the Susquehanna. The improvements and maintaining of one of Harrisburg's real jewels, the Italian Lake, and many other significant, lasting projects were built in the city. And he also had many much-needed social programs that he established throughout the entire city and well beyond. He was awarded so many state and national awards for his work that there are too many to mention right now. His well-known government and his governance stretched far beyond the city. 
and was written about all over the country. His personal passion and his night and day work ethic set an ongoing, highly positive tone for the people, and I was one of them, and not just residents of the city, but all over Pennsylvania and beyond, that the Harrisburg capital city was definitely in good hands. So what happened? Did he stay much too long as mayor? I definitely think so. I don't think anyone should be mayor of any city in America for more than two four-year terms, like in Philadelphia. Things started to look troubling, I think, about the last 10 years of his reign. Remember, that does not mean there was any illegality, but the multi-million dollar debt at our incinerator and the purchase of millions and millions of dollars of artifacts and how the entire debt developed has caught great anger and honorable questions and is finally being investigated along with other financial transactions by a statewide grand jury from the Pennsylvania Attorney General's office. And there's also possibly the federal government looking into all of this. Why this investigation has taken so many years to occur, frankly, is not a question I can answer. The first receiver that was appointed by the governor for Harrisburg that was failing, David Unkovic, he called for a written investigation several years ago when he resigned under very unusual circumstances. There was a well-respected independent audit that was prepared years ago and that was at least, I think, a beginning roadmap for investigative authorities to follow and see where that led. There has been even a state Senate investigation in Pennsylvania of a small part of this entire debt that was accumulated. These have all raised red flags and finger pointed for many. However, we have to remember that under our system of laws, that because there is an attorney general investigation and possibly even indictments might come, that we cannot assume there was any illegal activity. It could have been bad judgments or things just didn't work out. We must remember, just as you would want if you were one named, people are entitled to due process under law from the time of any indictments through the ent entire case. Now, if there are any indictments, the fact even that there is a grand jury investigating does not mean there was any illegality. As Oling, at a grand jury, the prosecutors present the case. There is no defense. We have to recognize that all individuals who possibly are named or might be indicted are innocent until proven guilty. Whatever happens, I certainly hope this will result in finally putting these many years of controversy to rest. You know this to be a fact. Rumors and innuendos can and have and do destroy reputations and careers. And we all have to give everyone the fair opportunity that we would all want if we were named when the time comes, if it comes, to defend themselves. Frankly, I would think 
that those already publicly named for several years now would finally want the opportunity in court to clear their names.